There's the signature piece, my favorite part of the course. I mean, technically, we could also make this a par four. The wishbone tree. Doesn't really make sense as a par four. I love this. All right, so here's the signature hole I'll show you guys. Right here, obviously, we have no structures built yet, but we do have a flag marking the tee pad. And we got a nice little pond water carry. Basket would be somewhere somewhere on that hill there. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. I am here in a spot that Simon and I have been frequenting over the winter. It is in East Brookfield, and we are working on our very first joint disc golf course design. Simon reached out to me, said, what do you think? I'm like, I'm down. We had just done the Hauk conference at Maple Hill with uh, John and Dee Hauk, so. Um, they reached out to me actually a while ago until I finally got back to them. I have just had some busy times, obviously, with everything I've been going through. Um, but I'm so glad I got back to them because the first time I toured this property, I was like, this, this has to happen. And this would be so cool to be my first actual design. I, I brought you on board because I was a bit intimidated to do it all by myself. But uh, I'm glad I did. And we've been having a couple good, good sessions out here and it's coming together. We have 18 pretty killer holes. You'll see the property, it's, it's a really old nine hole ball golf course. Um, but we have a lot of obstacles, lots of woods, some water. This is gonna be a little, a little gym. It's only like 20 minutes from Maple Hill too. Yep. So. 10 minutes from Oak Holm, 10 minutes from 501. And it's yeah. a beautiful day out here, but I'll uh, have you meet the owners here. You guys are bringing disc golf to your farm. Sure are. Uh, whose idea? And uh, I don't know, how do you feel and how excited are you? Mandy's idea. <laughs> uh, I actually gotta credit my husband with that one. He's okay. been telling me for years that we needed to include disc golf. Um, we are pumped. We're just, we're so excited jumping in with both feet and uh, we can't wait. These guys have come up with an awesome design and we're looking forward for everything to come. Yes, so you guys are gonna wanna stay tuned. Probably the Massachusetts Disc Golf Facebook page. Oh yeah. I saw you guys posting there already. If you guys are a member, if you're local, Massachusetts Disc Golf Facebook page is probably gonna be like the news to see when the course will be open and stuff. But right now it's April. We've been working on this since November. So I haven't been here in a while. We've got some fairways cut now, right? Oh, absolutely. So we're gonna go check those clearing. out. And we're gonna check out the progress and definitely finalize the layout. So things are just gonna keep on pushing forward. But we're currently out on hole three, right Simon? When you're a beginner, when you're a pair of beginner course designers, a lot has to change before you're just settled on the perfect idea. And I think that every single time we've come out here, the hole that we're standing on right now has been changed. That's the first right. time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the now the fifth time. The hole is like five, five changes. I wonder if this is too short right here. Cause that's like a, what John Hogg likes to call. Uh, not a golf shot, nags. A nag. You never want not nags. Not a golf shot. That means that it's basically just like a- 150 foot straight, yeah. nothing in the way. Or nothing in the way and so far you can't reach it. Both of those are an example of nags. But yeah. But we wanna keep this course also, we're thinking like- Blue level. 10, no, not 10, 950, 960 rated players should yeah. like score out here. Yeah. So, and what I kinda of like about this spot right here is that if I throw like a huge turnover bomb, I get an eagle putt. Reachable par four, hole three, for like the big, big arms. But that's what kind of what you're saying. Like that kind of par would be you can eagle, yeah. and 950 can birdie. I mean, it's, it's not even an easy shot to get to the landing zone, to be honest. It's all, it's all I like how brain. flat it is here. I'm just not, maybe put it a bit longer. Well, I think it depends on our next hole. Which, well, I like the idea of making the next hole a straight one. The next hole has a little pond here. So we would be throwing from over here on the left. You can either lay up short of the pond right here, and then it's a little little pond jumper over across, but this is, uh, like I said, work in progress. It's very golfish, but if we pull an OB line with the tree line on the right, yeah, that would and protect the fence the is fairways. obviously natural OB, so like I said, this is a look at, we're on hole four now. So there is a pond there. This is kind of like the bomber just unleash hole. All right, let me rip one. I even brought How chalk. far do you think we should put the water from the tee? 
Well, let's see how far this goes. Okay. Good idea. Perfect shot. I mean, that's that's probably like same distance, two shots. Maybe yep. like a yep. 750 foot hole. Yep, that's Simon's signature warm up right there. The hip snapper. It helps me survive. That is not a good shot. Get down, get down. Uh oh. Safe, barely. Safe. All right, well. Things stable. A little bit. Yeah, windy holes are fine. I like this hole. Way better than what we had before. Before we had it thrown from the right side here with a mando on the corner. Yeah. And that was just a little eh. I like to yeah. see a basket, you know, dead straight down the line. Here's my drive. The I'll flag is, where is it? Uh, oh, there it is. Right, right uh, there. D basically dead center screen. I'll park it. And he's gonna do just that. Oh, short. Oh, just crossed the water. <laughs> I like this. In the wind, this will be very challenging. My turn. I wanna throw one. Hey, will you film it for me? Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna thinking go... the tee bag might be, have to be a bit shorter. A bit shorter? I'm just gonna throw a little sidearm here. That's where okay. uh, you were, Simon. Is no. Right over there, so. Oh, that might be in the water. Is it? No. Uh, <laughs> You're right, it is in the water. Oh no. Yeah, it's farther than it looks. It is way farther than it looks. Yeah. And the then the headwind, sheesh. It's the openness. Openness gives you that deception because and water. it's harder to judge distances. No know? course love for the designer. All right, so we threw, you know, a tee pad all the way at the back corner, upshot right across the pond. And it's then, uh, I don't know this might be why one I thought ones. that first sidearm of the day would come with ease, but my DD one. Is yeah, but in those I don't want it to be like a tweener right where it's so, like so you'd have a wicked easy that's okay because I brought yeah. it back. Tweener holes are like where it's like between par four and par five, where it's like well, the other thing that might change the wicked easy second shot would be again going back into the corner with your tee box. Yeah, so now, um, you're, but then it's like two shot. boring hyzers in a row and then another straight shot. It's like, yeah, I agree. I, I feel think like that would be boring hyzers. Yeah. I feel like one boring hyzer on a hole is enough boring hyzers. Yeah, I kind of like where it is right now, honestly. I think an OB line down the right side is a must. And once it's mowed, it'll look really nice. We can call it the runway hole. Yeah. Maybe build like an extra large tee pad where people can just like go full send. I like it. And then they can throw their disc in the water. And if they reach the water, they get a bonus at the pro shop. I get a bonus then. No, in one. I get a bonus. In one. In one. <laughs> All right, we're about to look at one of my favorite and most exciting holes on the course. The first pure wooded hole. Just wait till you see where the basket is. All right. <laughs> it's way up there. Yeah. Is it, we put it back in the pines there. All right. So here's a nice little defined tunnel here. It does a natural little bend like that. But we're going to go farther into the woods and see what the second half of the fairway looks like. Um, depends. I mean, the easiest shot is like a right to left curve. Because that was, that's what the disc naturally wants to do. It has the most room for error. Yep. <sighs> Commonly said, a straight shot is the hardest shot. All the good wooded disc golf courses have the loving help from a wood chipper. As you can see, a beautifully chipped fairway. <laughs> what hole is this, five? Yes. We're only on hole five. <laughs> Dang. Typical. Can you see the flag? It's not that pink ribbon on the dead tree, but it's kind of to the left. Oh, yeah, I see it. So it's not that far from here at all. No, distance-wise, it's not. Yeah. Which means you don't really need to get this far then, right? I mean, if you were back there, you'd be okay. It's all about, you know, uh, ideal landing zone versus, like, workable landing zone. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, you don't have to be absolutely perfect to score. But when you throw the shot absolutely perfect, it makes it a lot easier to score. Because you're easily reaching up into here. Oh, yeah. Without any tree hits, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Lots of trees. How much do the uh, D flat, Casey? How much would it, if you just winged a tree? It depends. Much? If you're, if you're going to throw it 30 feet, Simon's going to throw it up to 100 feet. Yeah, I'm just trying to find a good spot for this tee. 
I liked the idea of the flex shot. Tee pad, basically right down in that field, coming up here. And we had to go this way, back to here, square yourself up for the gap. That would mean some trees gotta go. Let's say sweet spot's right here. Yep. This tree's gone. Yep. Yeah, this is good enough. We just marked a bunch of trees to be cut. There we go. And now we have a general landing zone idea. You can even push it further to here. Yeah. And you have, you have literally four or five options so to get to the basket. So let me show you the gap now. That are all wide enough to be fair. So this tree is going to be gone and these skinnies will go. So it's kind of like a couple different approach, but let me show you where the basket's at. Perfect. There's the basket right there. Did you clean up the next hole already a little bit? Yep. Oh yeah. Cool. Sweet. On the next. After four par fours, three par fours in a row. A little ace run. Three par fours in a row. We got a tee pad. And we've got a little backstop target. There it is right there. Do you see the bas the basket? I can. Simon cannot see the flags because he is colorblind. It's on that heavy um, shadow stripe about three quarters away up the hill. Oh, uh, okay. Don't see it, but I know where it is. It looks like a pure... Oh, now I see it. Now I see it. 280 foot hole. We're going to find out. And that is... Oh! A birdie pot. That tree on the other side. I that. didn't even see that tree. Yeah, they always say that. Oh. oh, I thought you were going to catch the, Getting the, the closest one and it got right by it. This is not easy. No, it's definitely not easy. Oh, yeah. No, it's pretty hard, actually. All right, let's try one up the middle. That's a birdie. Probably a birdie. All right, here's my MD3. The basket's over here. Oh, just got whacked in the face by a stick. All right, here's a little view. Basket, tee pad. Right there. Nice little gap. All right, next hole. Here's the Another par four. Kind of a unique shot where you want to have like a hyzer stand up kind of to a landing zone and then it's like a hyzer from there. Um, let's try. Whip a Tesla. Oh, I overturned it a bit. And that's the tree that Simon wanted to make a Mando. Yeah. So he dismissed it. But now that's in the prime spot. So now that's not going to be a Mando anymore because he just did it. Did it go to the right of it? it yeah, it did, but right it's a great it. shot, and I think that should be rewarded. Really? I'm not sure. I think that tree might have to be a Mando. Why? Because you got lucky? Ba my main reason is to get away from basket four. Yeah which is right there where I dunked a disc. Yeah. All right, my turn to rip one. Yeah. I'm gonna hit the gap though. That's what it's well, supposed well, to look that's like. That's the perfect shot. Yeah, right Minus, the brush, Minus the brush pile. Minus the brush pile. We're still cleaning up out here. Yeah. We've made a lot of See, I think that shot should be rewarded, not my shank. I don't like mandos. I agree, but on golf courses, mandos are sadly necessary here and there that's fine but not that tree maybe the tree to the right of it sure all right we're back at what's this hole eight yes. right. hole eight i showed this earlier this is where the tee pad will go it's not going to look like this but the basket's going to go up on that hill short of the pine rip it video won't do it justice but it looks really cool yeah nice water You'll shot just have to come downhill play it. and then back to uphill it's a par four but simon could do it Mm. Not today. Not today. As he falls over and throws it perfect. No, it's stalling. Sit. Tough okay. upshot. That's going to be a fun upshot. That's Ripping tail in, too. It is a long way. Lazotti. Lazotti. Pew. That's more like it. I kept it better in play. Oh, that's the prime spot. So, when you guys come and play this course in the future, you're going to have to film this and tag us, see how far you can make it. So I'm measuring my shot. 440. 
Hey, I said 450. It's close. Oh yeah, I love it. All right. I think this is hole 11. This is a sick hole. A sick hole. T pad. Yeah, you got a nice little tree gap. Ready? Bam. You got there like a is. low ceiling tunnel. This is literally a tunnel shot. And it's only like 250, so it's like super ace rentable, and you really got to keep it like low, almost nose up. Big fan. Forehand, skip shots. Right, and you got to throw this one. All right, we'll throw it. I don't know where the, exactly the flag for the basket is, but. Yeah, it's, it's directly in line with that little fork. It's right in the middle, short of that fork tree. Okay. Dude, I'm kind of thinking, what if you clear around that fork tree and sit the basket in the fork tree? In it? Like a spider tree, like oak grove? Yeah. Anything is possible. Let's look at the tree, but maybe that's too much. Sit. Oh, pin high right side. Pew. Ah, too much turn. She going. Good kick. Oh, that might be in trouble. Bad kick. <laughs> that right <laughs> side is jail. That was, I threw that one down the bogey lane. Here's another tee pad. This is uh, one of my first solo holes. Right there, the flag, I don't know if you can see it. It's right at the base of the stump there. And, uh, First day Simon ever took me out here, we drove back here and I just stood at this woods tunnel and it was just like, this is this has got to have a hole right down the middle here. It's a little double option. There's going to be like a little flex to the right or like a penetrating straight shot. But unfortunately, there's a tee pad over yonder there. So this one's going to have to be Mando right. And you know, you try your best as a course designer to minimize mandos. When I designed the course at my parents' house, I only had one mando and it was to protect a tee pad. But when you're working on a golf course, sometimes it just has to happen. All right, guys, it's time to address the elephant in the room. I know that this is gonna come out quite a ways after this occurred. Something very special happened yesterday and that's because yesterday was the eclipse. And uh, I started the day out with a round of disc golf with my caddy, Bob, my dad, and Angel at Meadowbrook and then I went to pick up Ellie to bring her back to Meadowbrook so we could all watch the eclipse and just so happened that we ran into Simon there and he was trying to film a little eclipse ace and I joined in and I hit the very first Skywalker ace on hole 13 at Meadowbrook and you can watch it because Simon sent me the clip hope you don't mind if I use the clip but no, use it. here's the ace right here enjoy Oh, come on. Oh, Skywalker. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did it. Nice. Skywalker race. Is that your first? first one. First one on the vlog. Let's go. Woo. Meadowbrook is in Sterling. It's uh, one of the better new courses in the area. Okay. We are striving to be as good as Meadowbrook over here. Now, but. Are, there, are there any known um, course architects currently in disc golf? Course architects? That have, yeah, like a, a name, like, well, go to this guy for design. John Houck. John Houck. Um, he's got multiple courses in, he's got, in play. He's got close to 100, I think. Wow. Yep. All over the, all over the, uh, all over the world. Wow. Yep. And, uh. Former professional? No, he was more of a media guy. He's always been like a grow of the sport kind of guy. He was always in the professional scene, but not, not typically as a player, I would say. He was usually the guy doing the interviews after the round and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That's the side of basket position here, right? Yesterday, very special occasion. Shout out to Simon, I'm so glad. I just happened to run into him. And uh, this baby's gonna have to get retired. So, gotta get, a, gotta get a new Skywalker to beat up. Hole 18, the epic finale. There's your flags. Finishing par five, finishing in style. Gap shot through the woods. We're gonna cut the two trees in the middle down there. Yeah, those trees gotta go. And then... Wait till you see the green. The green is pretty badass. Um, definitely signature hole with hole eight being right here. Yep, back to back tee pad with the wishbone again. Here's hole eight, here's hole 18. Something about a little mid-round congregation spot. 
Always, I've always liked that. We have to move hole two's pin a bit. Yeah, hole two is definitely gonna see some alterations. I don't even know if I showed hole two earlier. I think we started when we were on hole three. But hole two is definitely gonna need a little revision. Um, not, not to worry though, it's probably still gonna have the same premise, just different, different obstacles, different basket placement. Another option would be making hole four a par five. Okay. So we can make hole one a par four or Hole four, par five. And what's our goal with the par? 63. For? Because this farm is actually called Mile Marker 63. Perfect. So for a Mile Marker 63 disc golf course. We need a par A par 63, 63 would be the most natural fit. And our original uh, design was 61. So yeah. we're just doing some minor tweaks. Gotta, gotta make it super nice. Simon is marking the trees to be cut. The T-pad's gonna go just over that rock ledge. And I'm basically standing in the landing zone for somebody who plays the gap safe. Maybe like a mid-range shot out. But here's the fairway. And it's gonna take me a second to get you out there. So we just got some nice grapes, ice cold no, grapes. No, the seeds ruin the grape experience. Not bad, this beautiful day. I mean, naturally they should, but for humans they shouldn't. Time is talking. I... All right, so now we're way out in the field. You can barely see the pink tape there. That's where the gap's gonna be coming out. And then you got this wide open field. But this is the cool feature of the fairway here. There's this big rock slate. I don't even know what you really wanna call it, but we originally considered putting the basket right here on the rock slate. So with our ideas, we toyed back and forth. We really ended up wanting a par five to finish because it's the only par five on the course for now, we'll see. But I figured that the big rock face, instead of being like the putting green, could just be the fairway feature. And then the basket will wrap around to this beautiful spot. This is a spot that I absolutely demanded that we needed a putting green on. Did we want the basket down here or up here? Uh, I don't actually know. I mean, it should be visible. I figured down here, yeah, I like it up here. I like it up there too, but it's very blind, considering that the fairway is over here. Blind's okay. Blind is okay with a big flag on it. Right there, boom. I like the moss. Done. Done. Kind of. Hold well, one. That's uh, that's basically the general idea of the course we got here. Kind of mind blowing how many different designs went through this course. Yeah, we. The first time we ever came out here, we literally designed a full 18. And the second time we came out here, we took nothing from that full 18. Literally. We changed literally everything. That's that's how course design works. I mean, we're so inexperienced. I mean, we've played a lot of courses. Yep. So we have that experience. But when I first toured this place, I was like, this is gonna be so easy. Cause it's such a perfect property with some elevation, some open, some woods. I like, think that's the worst thing you could have told yourself. That's your... gonna be so easy. Yeah. It just uh, it just shows how tricky course design can be to get it just right. But it's come a long way, and here we are. We're basically steps away from putting some baskets in the ground and laying down some tee pads. But once again, thank you to Mile Marker Sixty Three Farm for. I don't even know, acquiring us as course designers. Simon and I definitely loved the learning experience and uh, I don't know, I'm just excited for the disc golf community to get their eyes and whatever, feet wet out here and see what they think of it. But I'm sure you guys are just as excited as we are. And uh, the beautiful weather is just gonna keep on rolling in mm -hmm. and there'll be discs flying out here in no time. <laughs> but I got a disc in the pond already. So I can say I'm the first person to lose a disc in the pond on hole four so but that's gonna do it simon and i got another vlog planned for this afternoon on simon's channel which is probably going to come out before you see this but here we are and uh can't wait to be back in the end of the summer and hopefully play around out here for the vlog of course wouldn't miss the opportunity but once again thank you for watching like and subscribe and we'll see you next time <laughs>